Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing Vanessa's nails. This is my very good friend Vanessa. Um, I do her nails probably once a month and she usually gives me like a general idea of what she's into and then lets me run with it which is super super fun. I do have a few clients that do that as well which is just a delight. Um, so we are starting by using a pair of cuticle nippers, old ones, not ones that I use on actual cuticles, to get rid of all those little metal studs. And then I'm going in with the Erica's ATA T-Rex bit and removing all the gel I had on top of her nails. She has a, um, a builder overlay. I usually use the D-Gel pumping gel in the sick consistency, which is like the thicker thicker consistency because Vanessa is very heavy-handed <laughs> and she does a lot of like crafts and stuff so she needs her nails to be sturdy. Um, it actually took me a really long time to convince Vanessa to let me do a builder overlay on her nails. Um, she used to just like, we do, I mean her natural nails are quite strong but like she would just be like sporting essentially this length with just a gel manicure on top um, and so we'd lose a few nails every now and again but she let me do the overlay and we we have not looked back uh so after removing the majority of the gel i don't get in too close to the side walls um when i'm removing the gel just because i'll go back in with a um a sandy band so i can get in tighter to the corners and the edges and stuff without risking hurting her little side walls um so now i'm just going ahead and reshaping we're taking down a lot of the length and I usually like to start by reshaping the middle finger versus any other finger just because when you like ask a client how long they want their nails they usually point to like their pinky and the pinky I don't know just because it's smaller it's never a really good example of the length how it will reflect on the entire set so I usually start with the middle finger and we check and make sure everything's good and then I compare the lengths of the other fingers to the middle finger uh, and now I'm going through and just starting on the prep uh, one step I did not include at all in this video, there's always one step, is I did go through and I filed off with the e-file. I used uh, the sandy band and got rid of that extra gel and then um, now I've moved on to this point where I'm pushing back the cuticles and then using this little scrapey tool and scraping off some of the dead cuticle that's stuck to the nail plate. It's important to get all that stuff off before applying new gel because that'll cause lifting and we don't want that. <laughs> So, um, oh yeah, okay, I'm trimming Vanessa's cuticles. She barely has any cuticle at all. She's an at-home chronic cuticle clipper. She, yeah, she'll leave me like a little bit, but it's like not even something that you actually need to trim off, but because she needs it off, I trim it off. For her sanity, she needs it off. <laughs> um, so again, I didn't film the sandy band after I would finish the prep like that, I would go over the natural nail with a gentle sanding band just to buff everything up. Um, and now I'm going in with the Gel Bottles Rubber Base. This is my favorite base coat. Also, my neighbors are moving downstairs. I'm sorry if you can hear them. Um, this is my favorite base coat. Um, I just find it adheres really well, especially to Vanessa's nails, so I go ahead and use that before going in with her Builder Base. Um, today I'm using the Izemi Builder Base, which I'm really, really liking actually. Um, like I said, I usually use the D-Gel Pumping Gel on Vanessa, but I was all out. So, using this today, I do have it now, so she'll get that next time. But because the length was a bit shorter, I wasn't too concerned anyway. And this Builder Gel uh, is it's pretty sturdy. So, going in with that and then just applying a slip layer and then walking a bead of the gel down the nail. Um, this gel has a really nice flow to it, like it self levels quite quickly, which is really kind of a delight. I would say even that this, the Izemi Builder or the resin gels are pretty beginner friendly, um, just because they naturally just want to go to the right places, if that makes sense. But I am flipping her hand upside down and I'm just perfecting the apex. Just getting some good height there, so we have that added strength, and then just touch up the sidewalls, and then throw her in for a cure. Once I've done the whole hand, then I wipe off the tacky layer on that, and I'm going in and just refining the shape a little bit. Uh, like I said, the builder gel goes to the right places, so there isn't too much refining needed, but I just don't want it to be too bulky, and I like to refine around the cuticle area, so we have a little bit more of a smooth transition. Um, I always start by doing the sidewalls first, making sure everything's straight, and then kind of rounding everything out. Um, I switch between using a hand file and an e-file like 
on an everyday thing, like depending on what I'm in the mood for. Right now I'm in a big hand file mood, so that's what you're getting. Um, I'm using the gel bottle hand files, and I really like them, but I also really like the Diami ones. I need to get more of those. And I'm giving her a little dust off and going in with a buffer. This is a 180 grit buffer. Um, and just smoothing out all the scratch marks because I won't go in today with a base coat. Um, I'll go just right in with whatever art I'm doing with the gel polish. Um, and today I'm actually showing you art on both hands. I usually don't. I usually will just pick one hand and then grid reveal show you both hands at the end. Uh, but I am showing you the art on both hands of the process. So let me know if you like that because it does obviously makes for a longer video, but I don't know, I find it interesting. So uh, I'm starting off with this gray color from the gel bottle and I'm gonna apply two thin coats of this. Um, I'm gonna show you just applying one coat, but I'm gonna apply two. Uh, so I'm applying this because I am going to do a silver chrome base. So lots of the time when people apply chrome, they usually apply black or white underneath. But when I'm doing a solid chrome, I really actually try and match the color just because chrome can be a little bit finicky. And not that I think we're gonna have any issues uh, with this set, especially because it's being applied on a builder base. Um, I just like to have the similar color in case the chrome happens to chip or wear down, then it doesn't look too obvious. Cause I kind of hate when it's like a black base and a silver chrome and then it starts to chip and then you just very much notice the black base coming through. Um, so that's why I'm doing that. But going ahead and applying the gray on a few more nails before switching to the other hand. And applying this pink. This is one of my favorite pinks. It's called Princess from the Gel Bubble. It's so cute. Also, Vanessa and I went to Claw and Kitty the other day. Have you guys ever been? It's in Markham, and it is the cutest place in the entire world. It's basically a Sanrio claw machine arcade. Um, so I died of happiness when I went. Vanessa had been, I had never been, saw it on TikTok. I love it, I wanna go back. <laughs> uh, I like definitely watched a lot of TikTok videos before going to like figure out how to do claw machines, like how to win at claw machines. Um, and it worked. I won quite a few and also just like the staff there were so nice and if you do anything wrong they'd like come over and be like, hey, this is how you can do better. Um, so I won a lot of, of toys and stuffed animals. Uh, okay, now I'm going in with the Daily Charm Chrome Gel. I really like this as a chrome base. You can use just like an on wipe top coat, but I've been, really been enjoying Using this, I'm actually almost out. I need to order another bottle. So I'm gonna apply this to all of the gray nails and then pop that into the light for a 60 second cure. And I'm going in with the Silver Chrome from Magpie Beauty. I used way too much on this finger, as you can see. Um, this is a super, super nice chrome. Very reflective. I think they've come out with a new one too that's even more mirrored, maybe? That's really pretty. I'd love to try that, but starting off with this one. And I'll link all the products down below because, you know, I'm like trying to make it with the name is on the bottle in the top right corner of the screen, but. I want to say it's Diana, but I really am not sure if that's also maybe the purple one or it's Diana. Anyways, it'll be linked. Now one thing you have to do when you apply chrome is file or buff the free edge. So when you cap the chrome in, it's really like locking and loading. You need that free edge to be roughed up so you, you get a, a secure grip with the top coat. Uh, I'm just using a dry lint free wipe just to dust off any of the dust from filing and any excess glittery dust. 
And then I'm going in with my top coat from the gel bottle that I specifically have marked as my glitter top coat, just because there's definitely a little glitter and chrome particles floating around in there and I don't wanna cross contaminate a non-glitter nail with this glittery top coat. So that's how I mark it. And then once this is cured, I'm actually gonna give it a light buff before I start painting because the gel bottle's top coat isn't a top coat that you can layer on top of each other. Also, Vanessa and I are good friends, so when our hands are shaking, it's usually because we're laughing. We have like a party every time I do her nails. And this is McCart Poly Gel in this cute little pink color. Just using that to make some blobbies on her nails. I'm not super well versed in poly gel. I bought it maybe in like January. And I've just like had it basically to do this. I've done, actually I did one extension set on myself using poly gel and it was an interesting experience. I'd like to watch more videos. The only thing is, is I find a lot of the videos are done by at home users and I'd love to watch a video done by someone who's been trained in poly gel if that's possible just so I know that I'm getting everything right if that makes sense because I, I don't know too much about it but actually it is really great for repairs if you have like a clear poly gel and you, someone has a chunk missing from their nail just slap a little a little blop of clear poly gel on and you're good to go also it's so satisfying to watch I love when it squeezes out the tube it's very sticky stuff though And I am using the, like with this kit of poly gel, I got like a little cleanser slash, I don't know. You put it on your brush basically to make it not sticky while you're working with it. So I'm using that, I just have it off to the side, I'm just dipping my brush in. It looks like bubble gum. Okay, airbrushing time. So I'm using these heart airbrush stencils from Glam Nails and I'm just popping one in the center of the nail there. I already have one on the pinky on the other hand, you can see there. Um, and then I'm going in with my airbrush and some airbrush acrylic paint again from, I buy it from Glam Nails, but the airbrush paint is by One Air Professional. And I'm aiming at the heart so it just like lightly spritzes around the heart to give like a little shadowed effect. And then I'm gonna do just kind of the center burst on the thumb as a base because I'm gonna draw on top of that after. Oh, this is so satisfying, peeling off the stencil to reveal. I love watching this. And then my favorite you have to cap in your uh airbrush the same way you would cap in chrome uh, my favorite product to cap in the airbrush is the izemi base coat um and this is in the thinner consistency and i haven't had any issues with it at all so i'm using that speaking of izemi you can get it at sweetie nail supply where i am a brand ambassador uh you can use code rebecca for 10 percent off your sweetie nail supply order Okay, going in with more airbrushing. So I'm just doing an ombre on this thing. So basically my goal when doing an ombre and I have like the natural base below is I'm just trying to cover up the free edge of the nail. So basically all the like white-ish bits and then fade it into the natural nail. And again, doing the same thing on this nail. Ooh, and then I'm going in with this checkerboard stencil which I got from Jessica Nail Supply and I'm doing kind of the center burst which in hindsight I wish I would have done this on a larger nail because it would have given more of the effect because Vanessa's nails are actually really small um, but it looks really cute I really like the way it turned out and then on this nail I'm using the same stencil but I'm gonna ombre it up from the tip
Ooh, so satisfying. Okay, then I'm taking, okay, I did have a little bit of gel remaining in my D-gel tub. It was like just enough to do little dotties. So I'm uh, doing that so I can apply little silver charms to the nails. And I find that the D-gel pumping gel in the sick, is it sick or is it SIC? Either way, you know what I mean. In this consistency, it's really great for applying charms. I use it quite a bit. Can add a bit more there for the big old charm. Just using my little diami, 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 uh, pin cure light, and then flash curing those on before sticking her into the big lamp. Now I am using a tub of clear gel. And I'm just d dunking basically my big heart charm into it just so it has a, a thick layer across the bottom because it actually makes it easier when there's going to be a gap underneath the charm because it's not perfectly shaped to the nail. It makes it easier to um, kind of apply it like that so you're not filling it in so much after. And just going to set that where I want it and then flash cure that on. And those heart charms are from Daily Charm. They're so cute. Okay, and then here I'm using the, I have like the Ugly Duckling Black Gel paint. And it's super, super nice. So I'm using that to draw a little crisscrossy pattern, which will end up looking somewhat corset-ish. Or like lace up, that's, that's the goal. And then I'm going in uh, with the same black gel paint and I'm painting a flame outline on the thumb. I'm using my favorite sissy brush. This is the 10 millimeter side because I kind of effed up the 20 millimeter side. I really need to bring all my brushes home and get them sorted out because I just somehow, they always end up weird and kinked in the, in the lid. I always get them stuck and bent in a weird way. I actually told Vanessa to stop talking during this point <laughs> because it's really hard to paint and breathe and do everything while you're doing a flame outline. Okay, now I'm attaching this really cute bow. Look how cute this is. These are from Jessica Nail Supply as well. Um, it's like a round little tray and it comes with a bunch of different colors. So I'm using black because we're on a real black and pink theme here. And carrying that on. And then I'm using that same, I think it's Show Me Clear Gel. It's from Sweetie Nail Supply. Again, it'll be linked. Um, I'm using that to basically go over all the spots where I've put on charms and gems and stuff. Not gems, but charms. Just to lock and load everything. I don't want anything popping off. And I'm also going to use it and kind of fill in any side gaps as well. So you can see here I'm really like smushing it right into the side of there so that way no like hair or anything gets caught. Um, also Vanessa has a little crochet business so I don't want any yarn getting caught. It's going to be yarn friendly this manicure. Um, and then I'm going in with the Young Nails Gloss Gel, which is like a hard coat top, hard gel top coat. <laughs> um, and I love it. It's super, super strong and it really locks everything in and smooths everything out. So I'm using that as our top coat today. And here we have it, the finished product. Let me know what you guys think. I think it's really cute. And it really aligns with Vanessa's black and pink cute inspo. 
or idea for what you wanted. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.